Hello and Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to Awareness Hour. I'm Maya Khan from Save Our Children Foundation. Um, Assalamualaikum. I hope everyone is well. My name is Samia Bandukta and I'm also part of Save Our Children Foundation. And today we have two extremely special guests. We have Dr. Sohail Tobani and we have Dr. Kishwar Inam, who we will be introducing. And today we will be discussing the issue of child abuse and ways to prevent it and strategies to basically overcome this problem in our society. So Dr. Sohail Tobani is a pediatrician who works at the South City Hospital and at Al Khan University Hospital. He's also the trustee of an NGO called AS, which organization that works towards rehabilitating underprivileged children with various drug addictions. And Dr. Kishwar Inam has been a consultant pediatrician at Aga Khan University Hospital since 2003. And she's also a diplomate from the American Board of Pediatrics. She's been working on child abuse for a few years now, um, introducing child, protect child protection services at AKUH. Additionally, she belongs to a group called Kasur Hamara Hai, which is currently working on children's rights in Pakistan. So thank you, guys. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thank and I'm going to proceed questions now. So my first question to you is that homicide is among the top five causes of death in for adolescents and one in four children suffer from physical abuse and nearly one in five girls are sexually abused at least once in their lives. So as doctors working with children what would you say about the seriousness of this situation and what do you think should be done about it? Who are you asking? Both of you. <laughs> Just for I'll let you start. Okay. okay. So, um, um, actually, uh, Myra, the situation is great. And the frightening thing is that we are not equipped with how to deal with it. So, the statistics which you have put forward right now is not specific to Pakistan. We do not have a national database which can tell us okay, how many abuse uh, cases are happening in Pakistan. We have some, you know, private organizations like Sahil is an NGO, which tells us every year that this, like, for example, in 2019, they said eight kids are abused every uh, day in Pakistan. But this is actually just the tip of the iceberg. And the majority of the cases are not being reported. So uh, we really, we, so if we don't know the numbers, how do we know what state we are in, right? And then to your next question, um, how can we do it? So they, it is a big list, but just to tell you the two main things what we can do. Number one is always prevention, prevention. So prevention awareness is the most important thing which we can do. And number two is somehow make our government establish a child protection services, child protection system, which actually works. You know, it is not just on paper, it actually works. And the implementation of the laws. So these are the things, I think. Dr. Dr. Sohail, would you like to Well, the short answer to your question about how serious it is, the situation is very serious. I mean, we all know that. Um, you actually, your question actually asks two questions. Um, you actually mentioned two problems. You mentioned sexual abuse and you mentioned physical abuse. So how do you deal with this? Um, very simply, um, you deal with it by creating awareness, which is exactly what you guys are doing the, with the Save Our Children Foundation. Um, it is, you know, we need to start a conversation. We need to talk about it. We don't talk about it. We say that if we talk about it, you know, society will acceptable. Unless we don't talk about it, how are we going to deal with this? I mean, first we have to accept that there's a problem. So talking about it is how we... We accept that there's a problem. Start a conversation exactly as what you are doing. Now, we as pediatricians, you know, will always, uh, we, we warn parents about, ab about this as being a possibility. And I'll talk a little bit uh, about that later. But, but the point is, uh, you know, we can do this at the government level, but we can also do this at an individual level. So parents need to be aware that these are the, st the statistics that you quote. And, and, and while girls are abused sexually more than boys, boys are also abused. But both girls and boys, boys a little bit more than girls, are, are physically abused. Um, and that's yeah. a huge problem. And our society accepts that. We not only do we accept it, we actually expect it. You know, we assume that capital punishment 
इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द कल्चर और नहीं नहीं भाई वो बाप है वो अब अपने बच्चों को सिखा रहा है बट टाइम्स हैव चेंज यू कैन डू दैट एनी मोर आई रिमेम्बर एन स्कूल यू नो 25 30 इयर्स अगो केनिंग वाज डन इट वाज डन इन केजीएस वन ऑफ द वंस हु शुड डू इट मोर देन एनीवन एल्स इज मिस्टर पैपवर्थ इन इन केजीएस um she was famous for his caning but of course that today cannot occur so things have changed we need to get, we need for people to understand this is not acceptable anymore if if you need to call out people who are physically abusing children of course you can't you can't call out the the sexual abusers because they are kind of hidden but we need to we need to identify this as being a problem we need to talk about it i agree Okay so thank you my next question is also to the both of you how can medical practitioners help ensure parental and caregiver support like providing new parents with training and knowledge on um, bringing up children and does this facility exist in our country already or does it need to be implemented or whoever wants to go first <laughs> so guess uh, what you know about the pakistan situation yes go ahead okay. so actually um uh, samia um where we were trained i know uh, dr tupani was trained in usa too anticipatory guidance was in our curriculum in the pediatric residency we used to mm -hmm. we anticipatory guidance was a big thing so in those countries uh, parents not only uh, you know bring their kids for sick visits they bring the kids for well visits and these were the time when the pediatrician would sit with the um, uh, with the parents according to the age the development they would guide them they would let them know okay this you have to look for this thing and they, how how you can prevent uh, these things and so all kind of prevention awareness is in these uh, you know number of visits which uh, which they make so we are in you know bigger hospitals in karachi or in pakistan we are trying to do that um we um you know even and because it is so ingrained in actually in myself and i know i dr tubani too we even in sick visits we try to give advice and you know what what not uh, whatever uh, the chance we get so I, when i when i check the private parts of a, a little girl i would keep on talking and i would tell her that do you know do you know that no one can touch your private parts and uh, the, the doctor can only do it because you know the, the doctor is making sure that you are uh, okay there and your parents can uh, do it or a caregiver can do it because you know they are cleaning you or for hygienic purposes or whatever or when you are when a doctor is seeing you um, uh, your parent should be there so these are the things i mean we we try to uh, find those time and find those moments that we can give this what what we call the pearls um, you know this is this is the time that we can you know let them know something which is good for them and we can guide the parents because you know the parents are not 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 aware uh, in pakistan I, i i can tell you one of my cases um uh, uh, three four month old um I fell from a uh, charpai the charpai was being used like a trampoline uh, th four, the mother used to leave the four month old with a four and a six year old who would be jumping on the charpai and the kid would be you know lying there and she would say just keep a, a, a eye on the baby and so of course the baby probably the one of the sibling fell on it and so came in with right sided weakness and when i sat down with the mother for like an hour she said doctor ye to bahut dafa gira hai aur main to doctoron ke paas jaati rahi aur doctor mujhe kehte the ki bachcha hai girega to ye to aap mujhe pehli dafa ye baatein bata rahe hain so this is the state we are in you know kishor i i really like your term of private parts and you know i i actually like to take this a little forward so what i tell the parents and on these on, on these anticipatory gu guidance visits i tell the parents that the private parts are private only you and your husband or only the mother and the father can touch a child's private parts and i will actually identify them in a girl her, her, her chest and the, and and what i call refer to as the private i mean the, the diaper area and mm -hmm. in boys of course the the diaper area so to speak but what i tell them is that you know hamare culture mein very aur jo humne sab bhi kiya hai ki jo jo chote bachcho ko we give them a pat on the bottom i tell them after 8 or 9 years of age no one can pat you on on the bottom except the mother and the father not the grandparents 
not the khalas not the chachas not the puppies not a man not a woman no one should touch a child's private parts after 8 or 9 usse pehle it's probably you know it's probably not a big deal but certainly you know not outside the immediate family so and parents don't think about it and many people will think about you know giving a pat on the bottom to an older child also acceptable it is not acceptable because that's how sexual abuse starts you it starts with very little little things and the predators are usually within the family they are known to the family so they are not outsiders so the child has no weapons uh, to be able to, uh, to to be able to fight it i'll i'll, I'll tell you the example hamare hamare family mein family mein ke hamare hamare cook hai he had a very simple child who was mentally disabled or uh, mentally uh, uh, slow so she was going to a school that girl grew up and she developed so when she was 16 17 she had the mind of a 3 or 4 year old maybe a 5 year old um so she was actually being abused by two of the teachers in the school she was being raped by them and this has happened so she this girl would fight to go to school she did two things she became constipated and she wouldn't want to go to school she would cry because she had no weapons she did not understand what was going on so so the mother actually took it took it to the school and you know ye kachi abadi mein ya you know it i mean it's in, in an urban slum so there's not much so the mother kept the child home which is entirely understandable now as as kishore was saying our law, there, there's very limited what our law can do now you know it was brought to our notice many many years later um, actually many months later so by then those two kids had had, had of course gone but you know we we don't have a well developed system for society be, to be able to protect the vulnerable and the, i'm sure these are just two stories you've heard from kishore and me but i'm sure there are thousands like this that happen every single day with and and we are you know what we can do is very limited definitely um so actually the recent case of mariam who we dealt with at ssc i think she was i think a 6 year old girl her and her sister were harassed by her stepfather and her brother actually and the mother was witness to this but she couldn't do anything about it because she was black so that's also a huge problem in our society that we like we need women yeah. to actually and mother is to actually come out and be able to speak about this exactly so that leads me to my next question Is there a way to link health with education and life skills? For example, establishing a safe school environment and improving children's standard of living and other uh, life social skills. So um, definitely, I think uh, skill-based health education uh, teaches healthy lifestyles by uh, you know uh, through knowledge and through skills of you know basic life skills, um, coping skills, decision making. um social well well being uh, self awareness self protection and basically you know skill based health education uh, uh, is for the um, uh, what we can say physical emotional mental well being of the child right and um, it can target um things like healthy nutrition um avoidance of cigarette smoking avoidance of drugs alcohol um you know some information on uh, sexual health on reproductive health so these are uh, the things which are really very important and uh, the kids should know these things um to have that social skill and to be you know mentally physically emotionally well so i think um uh, if we can introduce this in the you know actually in the school curriculum it would be a great thing for us i just like to continue on that you know one of the skills which is very important for to teach children is if you are uncomfortable say no shout scream run these are i i'm talking in terms of you see children don't know that they are it is acceptable you know if a, if an uncle or a relative or a senior you know a, a family member is is making them uncomfortable they don't know that it's all right to say no so just teaching children that, so that it's all right to say no if you are uncomfortable you can say no and the other thing you, you, that parents need to have a conversation with their children is to say look if something bad happens to you come and tell us and because you know children believe that if they tell the parents the parents will 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 think it is their fault 
children naturally assume that it is them that that caused this this problem rather than there being a predator causing the problem they blame themselves so children need to know that if they tell parents parents are not going to hold them accountable for that bad thing that happened so that's another very important skill to to teach children sure but isn't it also important to educate parents like not put their child down when they say something because usually parents are like okay forget about it if it's a family member usually children are told that just forget about it just ignore and it and it's also that's about also the me. sorry my order got you off also about no, the reputation ahead. of the family that's at stake you know a lot of the times it's yeah. especially in our pakistani society it's become a taboo and you know it's not spoken about because it's become a taboo so a lot of the times parents think that you know we just keep quiet about issues like this so there really needs to be action taken against this in order to you yeah. know stop this from happening of course this is happening a lot in um, you know we need to educate our parents for this okay so my next question is once again for the both of you so knowledge about the extent and harmful effects of violence against children is growing um together with evidence about effective strategies in order to prevent this but how how do we build on that knowledge in order to work collectively to establish safe stable and nurturing environments in order to protect children and adolescents from um all of this violence and harm so how do we establish those environments let let, let me try and answer that So I think that it is important to teach parents and actually civil society in general to when to differentiate between right and wrong. So, for instance, even though the culture accepts that hating children is okay, but we need to teach society that it is not okay. That it is not okay to hit anyone, um, and to and and we need to teach people that when you hit something, hit someone, you actually lost your cool. Once you lost your cool. then you lost your sense of reasoning and when you lost your sense of reasoning there's no way that you're going to teach anyone any lessons no matter how many times you hit them so it, it it is it is we need to educate society to be able to differentiate right from wrong that hitting is wrong it's not going to solve any problems and we and we need to be able to get that message across so and the other thing i would like to add is that you know and as i i said it before that we are a country where there is no child protection system right so the only the key is prevention awareness right that is the main armor or that is the shield we can provide to our kids to go out and you know uh, uh, be uh, uh, like normal human beings and to safeguard themselves so i think prevention awareness to uh, the kids is the most important thing and it should start from the parents the parents should teach them that, that this is you know the, the the same things like you know safe and uh, unsafe touch uh, your private parts your body no one can touch it things like that so it should start from the parents school is a you know is is a, a place where the kids can be taught these things and they can you know learn these things and uh so that is uh, that is another thing um and then uh, media the influence of media i think that uh, puts a lot of things in our mind uh, if they show a little less violence and they uh, show more positive things um in everything you know up now media is like our life right everywhere social media and everything and lastly but not the least that it is the government's responsibility to set up a system to set up you know to have this prevention awareness on mass scales that people know about it um so you you sorry to cut you off myra but you, i know you have a question but i just wanted to intervene for a sec you mentioned that it's the government's responsibility right and so i i was reading up a few days ago and i actually read something that talked about how it took the government two years after zainab ansari's case to actually pass a law in the parliament a new law yeah. against child abuse so i think that you know it took the government this long and it really just shows the amount of priority that's given to such cases by the government and it shows you know the the lack of action that has taken place by the pakistani mm-hmm. government that samia actually my group was behind this we did the zara um, uh, law and we you know proposed it mm-hmm. and everything first amar umar uh, asad umar wrote it but then we kind of corrected it and we we proposed it so uh, we were like pushing them 
uh, the child right activists were pushing them, but no one was listening. It was like, you know, blind, deaf ears. So, um, so um, um, this is how our government is. I mean, priority, this is not their priority right now. So um, my next question to you guys is that teaching children about their bodies, like you spoke about, and how to respect and care for them should be a top priority in schools, especially teaching them about consent and how to respect that. So why is it that uh, as a society we consider this topic as such a taboo and therefore we fail to tackle it? You know, it's interesting that even though we, we are a very conventional society and we are deeply a religious society, um, but these problems, this is not unique for Pakistan. When the HIV issue developed in the West, um, and one of the ways that people realized to prevent HIV from spreading um, is by the use of condoms. So at that time, you know, people were promoting condoms, number one, to, to prevent, uh, obviously, uh, 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 un unwanted births, but also to prevent uh, uh, HIV. And there was a huge reluctance in Western societies where, you know, people, uh, people, people talk about sex a lot more than it is discussed in our, in, in our culture. So So we think if we talk about this, in some way, we are going to be promoting this. Which is which is stupid because it's irrational. Um, so it really um, and it, it 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 took the West a long time to get over that uh, the the mental block of promoting condoms and actually teaching young adults to use condoms and it was actually taught in school. Um, and, but initially there was a lot of reluctance and then eventually it's now of course it's you know it's kind of accepted and it's a part of all uh, school curriculums uh, at least in the West. Um, so I think we, it will take us a, a long time, but we need to be able to, as I said, talk about it and create awareness um, for this to, for, for us to be able to accept uh, this as being a problem and therefore we can come up with solutions. So taking Dr. Tabani's uh, word, uh, 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 so um, I think uh, culture is number one thing. Then we, as he said, wrongly, sometimes we wrongly blame it to our religion, which is really not true because Islam gives a lot of um, uh, 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 rights to children. And then I think the main reason is lack of education and lack of awareness. So let me give you a simple example. A six-year-old uh, girl is abused by her uncle. Now, at six years of age, she has no clue what happened to her. I mean, this was, this was an incident. She has no clue. She has no communication skills to tell anyone that what happened. The uncle threatens her and um, for, you know, consequences that she, he will do something to her. And then the uncle convinces her that she was a part of it and she, you know, gave consent for it. So this is a girl. Then there is another girl whose mom actually talked to her. Um, uh, uh, things like, you know, what is what are the private parts? What is safe and unsafe touch? Uh, no one is allowed to touch your private parts. If, if someone touches your uh, private parts, go and tell an adult or tell me and don't keep a secret, run away from that place. So this girl will also be very scared and probably uh, this little girl will also not tell it right away. She won't go to the, her mother and say, hey, my, the uncle did this to me. But she, in her mind, she will know that this is not her fault. The first girl might think that, you know, maybe i don't know what was this and this may be my fault but because the mother had you know talked to this girl she will have this thing in her mind that whatever happened to me um was something bad which the uncle did to me so not today but maybe tomorrow maybe in a week she will disclose this to her mother so let me give you a real case example a couple of weeks before a little boy got uh, sexually abused um, uh, in a madrasa from his one of his teachers. So the police came and uh, you know, arrested the Malvi. Uh, though in the village, the Malvi was very respected. So they came out of their houses and there was a big protest that why have you arrested the Malvi? And the father of their child was in the protest. Can you imagine that? I mean, I mean the father of the, that kid. And we have had, you know, over the last several months, we have seen cases in which the kids, actually there were two, again, madrasa kids, 
they came home they, uh, they said we are not going to go back someone is you know uh, uh, abusing them but the parents said you have to why can't the father was so strict he sent him back to the madrasa and then the uh, child ran away from there and then it, it is a bad story like in couple of cases like this that you know the parents parents do not realize that what will be the consequence of this abuse on the child and they care about the that religious teacher more so so again this is the situation okay. um so my next question is uh, directed towards dr kishwar but um of course dr tabani you can also answer it if you like uh, what would you say about parents who have been abused as children themselves because studies indicate that one third of people who are abused in childhood will go on to become abusers late, like themselves later in life so this yeah. obviously poses a major social challenge and what can we do to combat it so um uh, samia uh, lot of studies have been done on these perpetrators and they come from all kinds of backgrounds religion social strata so you cannot just say that these are you know they have these characteristics and um, uh, and the studies on um, the victim becoming the perpetrator again um, it, the studies the results are very variable but it is true that some percentage of these um victims or the uh, or the kids who were abused during their childhood become abusers when they um, become adults um and but but it has been seen that there are many other um, you know negative factors around them uh, which make them like that um so again um uh, 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 let me give you uh, let me tell you that if uh, if a kid is abused and if the uh, the family is supportive the parents are supportive and they um, uh, the, the the kid knows that there is appropriate psychological or mental treatment um at that time um the kids are so resilient that they will overcome their trauma effects but if the same kid is you know repeatedly abused again and again and that kid has no family to support um, no family support or no parental support or that kid does not get any appropriate timely uh, treatment then um, then uh, you know these kids actually do not understand what uh, the negative effects of abuse this, this is their life you know in pakistan when you when we talk about you know these bus addas and the coal mines the boys are being abused again and again and these poor kids they they cannot you know say anything to anyone right they have i mean they they uh, uh, they don't even know that there is a life uh, beside this too that that some kids are living without these sexual abuses so this becomes their life right and this is this is probably becomes a norm for them and then when they grow up they do the same thing so unless and until a support is provided the family support the parental support the parents have to understand this that you know it is again wohi wali baat hai ki parents kehte hain ki bas chup ho jao ek mere paas 16 saal ki bachchi aayi uske sath ek incident hua tha bahut choti thi jab 6 saal ki to wo mujhe puri waqia suna rahi thi and then i asked her beta did you tell this to your mother मैम मैं तो उसी वक्त बताया था अम्मी ने कहा चुप रहो कोई बात नहीं है ऐसा होता है बस चुप रहो किसी को बताना नहीं तो दिस दिस इज इज आवर कल्चर आई डोंट नो दिस दिस द थिंकिंग ऑफ आवर पेरेंट्स एंड वी नीड टू चेंज दिस अदरवाइज यू नो वी आर गोइंग टू गो डाउन एंड डाउन एंड डाउन एंड आई एम सो ग्लैड आई मीन आई एम रियली इम्प्रेस विद यू गाइज एंड आई एम थिंकिंग दैट यू नो वेन यू गाइज you know samia and myra uh, uh, girls like you you understand these problems and when you will inshallah have kids you will be you know well aware of these problems right so uh, so uh, good job thank you absolutely it's this is super important what you guys are doing but you know i just want to you know dr kishwar gave that example of that child eventually running away from home because he was concerned that the dad was going to send him back into a position where he was going to be repeatedly abused 
Um, yeah. So let me tell you what happens to these children who run away. Um, I work for an NGO that takes uh, that rehabilitates street children. They get onto yeah. the street, actually live on the street. They beg, they do petty crime, they you know steal. Begging is the main thing that they do. But then what happens, there are predators on the street who sell them heroin. They sell them little packets that they call the tokens. So they get them to become addicted. Once they are addicted, you know, they are in their control because that guy will have to spend 500 rupees every day to get his fix. But then he reads 500 rupees. So, you know, I, one of the people that we had in our, um, in, in, in our center, our, our center is called AS, AS as in uh, the Urdu word, AS as in hope. So, you know, we, we, we're giving these kids hope. So we had, we had, we had taken, we had gotten this uh, two brothers, a 14 year old and an eight or nine year old, both of them who were addicted to heroin. And we, we were trying to rehabilitate them. And the older brother, the 14 or 15 year old, was selling the younger brother for sex to pay for his addiction. So here's this eight or nine year old getting abused sexually. So both these kids were addicted. And, and you know, when they got to our, uh, our center, they were severely damaged. They couldn't talk. They could not do anything. So one of the things that we, um, uh, you know, and part, and part of what, what one of the, the symptoms is when they come in, oh, both of them had slashed wrists. You know, they, 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 they slashed the wrists because, you know, been, because it's called self-harm. It's very common in these very, very severely damaged children. So that's what happens. So you have to adult on, uh, you know, causing sexual abuse. Here, the child was doing his little brother. I mean, uh, and uh, again, and, and part of the thing of all of uh, is 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 sure, uh, uh, and, you know, the, the kids are, have run away from home because they were probably living in an environment where they were they were being harmed. Either they were beaten up or in, as in Dr. Kishwar's case, you know, the child had just run away because he was just trying to protect himself. So it's, it's difficult. And many times it's poverty, which is even, you know, even a bigger problem. Yeah, yes, sure. so we have seen many cases in which the mm -hmm. kids are, you know, uh, 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 getting themselves sexually abused for money or for food. And it is it is very unfortunate, but it is happening there. These poor children don't know that there's actually a life where, yeah. you know, their kids may not get abused. They assume that this is a part of life. Are there any programs to treat this or to help these children that currently exist? Well, as well, I said, I, I, I work for an NGO where but we, we actually do rehabil we rehabilitate kids, um, yeah. you know, and who are severely damaged. And these are street children. These are kids who are living mm -hmm. on the street. So, you know, the, and then we try and one of the, I mean, the eventual goal is to try and get them to be re reabsorbed by the family. So, of course, that takes years sometimes. But, uh, you know, if you, do, if, if you don't do it, what's going to happen? A 14 year old child who's on heroin living on the street, what is his life going to be? He won't live beyond yeah. 20 years of age. He'll die of an overdose much earlier. So we believe we are in the business of saving lives. And it's very difficult to get rid of the uh, addictions. And they take the drugs because they're just trying to give themselves a break from their miserable lives. Yeah. Dr. Kishore, would you like to add to that? For, uh, are you asking for the prevention? Yeah, if there are any programs that work to, to, well, to help these kids who have already been through. Different NGOs, every NGO, and you know, there are private groups like my uh, group, Kasur Hamara, we do training centers and things like that. Um, the um, authority, Child Protection Authority, they claim that they go to schools and they uh, do these preventive sessions. Um, uh, so, so everyone is found their bit, but there is, you know, no. Uh, this should be on a national base, right? The the the, the prevention programs and um, um, uh, these kinds of uh, programs where everyone. So uh, I think if, like you guys were talking about the life scale and the safeguarding program, if that is, I think the major impact of these, uh, we, we can have uh, the major impact if these can be added to the curriculum in the schools. Because, you know, yeah. 
all of our kids are going to school. We know that. So the NGOs and all that who, who is working, they can keep on working on the side, but uh, we can cover a lot of kids who are going to school if we just put it in the curriculum. And I mean, it is um, also, you know, you have to know that these, these training sessions, uh, not every everyone can do it. It is a very sensitive kind of thing, which, you know, um, you have to be trained to do it. And so the teachers can get trained and, you know, they they can. And then again, we have to think about our culture that, you know, everything is not appropriate in our culture. Do we have to make these programs according to our culture and make these mm -hmm. programs so they do not offend our parents and do not, you know, uh, upset our public that, you know, how we are yeah. doing it. People get so annoyed with this, you know, sex education thing. So we just, if we call it, life skill program yeah. i think they would understand it better because they are thinking that we are copying america we are actually not doing that we need this in pakistan this is yeah. very very important that we add this in the curriculum and we teach our kids again this is the only armor and this is the only shield we can get our you know kids uh, prepared yeah definitely so I think now we'll just take questions from the audience. We have a few. So our first question is from Banu Ibrahim. And she says, how can physical and sexual abuse affect children later on in life? Well, one of the things that was mentioned is that these children who are abused are going to grow up to become abusers. So if a child is being beaten by his parents, let me assure you, He's going to beat his children and very likely he's going to be beating his wife also. So the first effect that happens to these children is that um, they grow up to propagate the same abuses that were done on them. So um, always remember when a child is physically abused or sexually abused, this is a big trauma in their life, right? And as I said, if, if this is done uh, repeatedly, then a point comes that they cannot, you know, resilience is a thing Alamia has made in us. But there is a point of no return. So if a kid is being abused and abused and abused and abused, a point will come, whatever you do, that child can never be normal. So we had like, you know, um, uh, actually the SIN government sent me two kids, 18 years old and six years, uh, 16 years old their father had kept them in a basement home um uh, no schooling no food they were like so so the 16 year and you know he was just he had some mental problems himself so when the kids uh, came to us they were like i cannot tell you i mean they were mal malnourished but they were tr severely traumatized kids and we started the psychological treatment and everything so the uh, a 16 year old is now and these were canadian kids so um so we were able to send them to canada to, you know save them mm -hmm. because you know the, yeah. uh, so this the the 14 16 year old yeah he keeps calling me and he you know i have you know kind of a, i have a bonding with him and he keeps on calling me and asking me dr kishwar how are you doing but this other kid who has gone beyond that part so he ran out of the house he was then picked up by the child protection um, uh, authority there and he's in a hospital so he is not meeting his brother and so he got he was he was at a point that he could not return but this other kid mm -hmm. year old he is mashallah doing better and he tells me that he wants to uh, do politics and he is interested in so i was giving him uh, i was asking him to you know do these lessons during covid time because he's hey, he has not started school yet um, so yeah. um, and he's trying to do all this. So the difference between two brothers, same environment, right? Our next question is from Shafiq Ahmed Siddiqui, and he says, "Has any solid analysis been done why this ill has become so predominant in the society?" Hmm. Um. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I don't have any solid analysis, uh, um, actually, but um, uh, but there, there, there are a lot of factors um, associated with it. Again, 
the taboo, the biggest thing is that we are not teaching our kids how to be safe. So that is that is one of the things. And then th I, I think the, the other things are that, you know, the social media, the, um, the other media, TV, violence, um, uh, uh, the pornography has become uh, so common. Um, these things starts you know adding to these uh, to uh, to uh, these factors are uh, of course very important and these add to these things and it becomes uh, it, it is growing and it is rapidly growing because of these things and no one is there to for example uh, you know cyber crimes on the internet we really do not have anything in pakistan to stop these things and children are children are going more and more on internet and um, you know they are getting um, uh, abuse there too so uh, so uh, uh, i think the lifestyle uh, the changes in our lifestyle um, that has affected a lot dr suhail agar aap kuch add kar sakte hain to add kare nahi i think you <laughs> answered it well Okay, we're going to end our session here. Thank you both so much for being here with us today. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too. Thank you both so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to do this session with us. And so thank you so much for doing this. I mean, it's just this creating awareness is super important. Thank you. That is one thing that I would like to give uh, you guys to, you know, the youth and uh, uh, that uh, when you see abuse happening in your surrounding a uh, please don't be quiet speak about it you know it is time yeah. that we speak about it and we let the proper uh, you know where the, we have to inform it we we need to do that we what yeah. we, uh, up to now what we are doing is that we just keeping quiet and we are trying to uh, brush it on the car the carpet and we are not saying it but this will not help us we have to speak about it and we have to um, um uh, take care of it yeah definitely even if you can save one life we know that we have you know saved the humanity so even if you see one uh, uh, um, uh, in your neighbors uh, in your relatives anywhere any kind, even, even the you know nowadays the domestic help uh, uh, little girls are you know working at home so even if you see that um, speak about it yeah so thank you For thank sure. you so much once again our next session will be on the 5th of September at 8 p.m. So don't forget to tune in for a very stimulating discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.